and it looks like mine needs just a, a little bit of adjusting. That one got a little bit offset. So let me use that move tool. Just kind of connect those two corners like that. Okay, and then the question kind of arises like, how do we eliminate that excess space? And I probably just recommend kind of filling it in. So I would like you to use a command called X edges, enter, hold down the control key and then identify this line and click on it. And then identify this line and click on that as well. And let's just uh, click on this bottom line here. So hold down control. This one might be a little tricky. There's that one and there's that one. So I clicked on those four. I'm going to press enter and it's going to turn those four lines on at least temporarily. I'd like you to select these two portions of the roof and put them onto your roof finish layer. Press escape once and then turn them off. So you're just left with those lines that we use the X edges command. Go ahead, go UCS, enter. And I want you to click on the line and we got to just specify a few points. So let's go ahead and, whoops, my ortho mode turned off. Specify this line as my X and then I'll just go up vertically for my Y, click there. So it should look something like that and it should allow us to draw it as well. So I'm going to zoom out really far, then zoom in. I'm going to draw a line from there. Okay. Turn off my ortho mode. Just go up at an angle. And then I'm going to do the same here. Just go across at an angle. We're going to try to trim these out right now. Let's see how successful we are. Okay. That looks good. That looks good. So I was able to trim that out and get that shape of the top of the roof. Then I'm going to use a line tool just to kind of segment this. The angle is not really important. You just want a small section of the roof that we could extrude across. So I'm going to trim this, all this out now. See if I could trim off, you know, some of this excess. Okay. And now I'm going to join them. J for join. This, this, this. as well as these. Enter. Okay, so that was all joined. So if I adjust it now, hopefully you can kind of see what I'm trying to do here. If I turn on the roof finish, you know, I've created that small segment that I can now extrude. Enter. And select it and just kind of go across the roof to the other end. And just click it down at a point. So it looks like that. It's like I patched up the roof. Um, only issue now is one this is here so select it click on the or hover to the center and turn it back to world and it's kind of like fused together but in a very weird way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the weird thing I'm going to allocate it over to the roof finish and then when nothing's selected I'm going to use the union command U N I O N enter and I'm going to select the three portions and I'm going to press enter and if you did that correctly, it's going to fuse it all into a singular object. So now the roof is finished, and I can also turn back on the underlayment. So you can kind of see it a little bit. Oh, we could have adjusted that, but that, that should be fine. So that's looking like a pretty, pretty nice roof. Okay, so I think we're ready to put all of this together. I'd like you to select the green line that I put on the roof finish layer and just put it back to the default layer, because we're going to scrap that afterwards. But let's start moving everything into place. So move, select the roof, enter, and I'm going to use that square as a reference, select it from the corner, and I'm going to put it on top of the original layer, which was that. And I guess I didn't really factor in for the thickness, but we can adjust that a little bit. I don't even think we got as much overhang as I wanted. But that's okay. Let's go ahead and fix that. I think the best way to tackle it is to hold down control, then click on the surface of something like the surface of this green roof, and a, or a red dot should appear. Now make sure all your snap settings are turned off. So you can turn them off over there. Your ortho mode is on. 
when you're doing this. It'll just make it easier to work with. Oops, let me get that back. And then I want you to click on the red circle and extend outward, let's say half a foot. So 0.5, enter, and it should just extend that outward. Okay, I'm going to do the same here with the finish. We could kind of leave it the underlayment where it is. But I hold down control, click on it, identify the red dot, extend outward, 0.5, enter. So it looks something like that. And I'm going to then flip it to the other side, hold down control, click on that. And if that shows up, don't click on that. That's, that's a trick there. Um, you need that red dot. So if click, try clicking closer to the center. That red dot should appear. Extend out, 0.5, enter. Click, click, extend out, 0.5, enter. Okay. So now I'm going to use that union tool again. Click on it, and I'm going to select the three red portions. And I'm going to press enter to fuse all those together. Okay. Let's delete any unnecessary sketches. We're finally done with them. And then move this here. So select everything, enter, over to the subfloor. So since I guess we started it from the joists, let me turn on my snap settings. We got to kind of start there. So that corner should be connected to the corner up there, like that. Enter, select everything again. And this corner should be connected to the corner there. Okay. Enter. Select everything one last time. And then this corner of our floor joist should be connected to the foundation, like so and press escape twice and there you go you have a shed or something that kind of looks equivalent to a shed and it might not look that much from this view it might not look that impressive but if you change it over to your 2d wireframe mode you can really see how many layers and how much work actually went into all of this so it's quite a bit and if you are going for that final bit of realism if you change it over back to your shaded view, adjust it over here from your drafting and annotation to 3D modeling. What we're going to do is open up our material browser, so MAT, enter, and you'll have some options that look like this or not quite like this, but you can do a search up here, and you could type things in like masonry or brick, and then it should come up with a bunch of options. You can select a surface, and let's say I'm going to want to put, let's say, some brick here. We'll have a lot of different options. And let's say I want to put this fire on. So I'm going to click the arrow, and it's going to upload it to there. Let's say I click on my roof. And let's go ahead and see what we have in terms of shingles. So it might be under the section called roofing. And then we got a number of different ones. You can expand out this box if you need to kind of like view things better. And I'm going to use a Let's use a Spanish tile blue and just apply that. Okay, and it looks okay right now. I'm going to close out of this if I could. Oh, there's the X. Looks okay right now, but if we actually go over to the Visualize tab and switch it here from Materials On, Textures Off to Materials slash Textures On, you'll actually end up with something that looks like this. And it looks kind of bad. Uh, but if you render it, so just we'll do a low render, so R-E-N-D for render. Click on that, it will like kind of render it. So it actually doesn't look that bad. Okay, so that's going to conclude this shed video tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, this is Mr. Z, signing out. Peace.